Welcome to today's information session. My name is Fatma Al-Harmoudi and my role is to manage accelerators and corporate innovation at the DIFC FinTech Hive. Through this presentation, I will be taking you through a little bit about who we are and what we do. Um, and then I'll take you through uh, our programs for the year. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to leave them in the Q&A box below and I will get to them at the end of the presentation. And just so you know, this uh, presentation and this webinar is being recorded and it will be up on our, web on our YouTube channel right after the webinar. So firstly, I'll be taking you through what we do. Many of you uh, would be dialing in or can be dialing in from somewhere abroad where you have not heard of the FinTech Hive. So I'll take you through a little bit about our initiatives and what we're about. So the FinTech Hive was launched in 2017 with one accelerator program. And due to its success, we've continued to offer that program on, a, on our yearly basis. And it is our flagship program. And while that accelerator program continues to be our core offering, we now offer more programs to support startups at different stages of their life cycle. Our programs are run specifically for FinTech startups. So any startups that are within the realm of FinTech. And the objective of the FinTech Hive is to develop the FinTech ecosystem in the region. And I'm proud to say that since 2017, we've accelerated over 160 startups to date. And these startups have collectively raised over $500 million in funding. We also offer corporate innovation for corporates that are interested in furthering their innovation agendas. And this is where we are, we are brought in as consultants to run accelerators for other institutions. We also run a co-working space for tech startups where we have over 500 startups registered in our space. And we can also support these startups in getting, uh, support startups in getting a license to operate out of the DIFC, uh, as well as support with regulation. Uh, it's important to note that uh, we don't directly regulate uh, these startups. The regulation is done through the regulator of the DIFC, which is called the DFSA. Uh, and their program is called the Innovation Testing License. Uh, we also like to run a vibrant startup community where we host a lot of events, um, a lot of which uh, are, some are, some are virtual and some are in person. And we also launched a Women Empowerment Initiative, which I'll talk more about uh, later on. Uh, we operate out of a co-working space in the DIFC Gate Avenue as part of the DIFC Innovation Hub. And for those of you who may not know the DIFC, it is the financial district of Dubai, where there are thousands of registered companies uh, set up in the DIFC, a majority of which are financial institutions. And as I mentioned, we as the FinTech Hive operate as a subsidiary of the DIFC authority. We, through our accelerator programs, have accelerated over 160 startups from around the world so far. And the programs really are a great way for these startups to tap into the Middle East market. Um, and actually something that's good that's come out of this new virtual world is that we were able to run the program fully virtually uh, last year. And we saw an even higher rate of interest in our programs since the participants didn't really have to incur the cost of coming physically to Dubai. Uh, and as a startup, you don't really need a license to, uh, in the DIFC to join the accelerators. And at the same time, you can get a license to operate at the DIFC without the need uh, of going through our accelerator program. So it, it just depends on what kind of offering you are looking for. Uh, we are very well connected with FinTech hubs globally. Uh, these hubs are a great way that our startups can leverage uh, support. And another way our startups can leverage our community for support is through our network of ecosystem partners. Uh, we work with a large network of ecosystem partners, and you can see here that these companies come 
from uh, different industries. And in that sense, we are able to provide startups with legal support, with tech support, uh, marketing exposure, talent management support, and more. Now I'll be taking you through our accelerator program, uh, which is our core offering, as I mentioned. Um, I'll be taking you through, first of all, a little bit of an overview uh, before going into the timeline for the year. In this program, we work with fintechs across different areas. So aside from the conventional fintechs, we work with insurance technologies, Islamic fintechs, uh, and regtechs as well. Uh, we work with the, the region's leading banking and insurance companies for this, programs, uh, for this program, and these are uh, the entities that the startups would eventually be working with. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that we don't take any equity from startups who join the program. Instead, our partners are the ones who sponsor the program, which is, why another, uh, which is another reason the program is really great for startups. We've seen great results over the years, and you'll see that in 2017, we received over 100 applications and had a small cohort of 12. In 2018, the interest grew in our program and we were able to um, uh, onboard a cohort of 22. In 2019, we received over 420 applications and onboarded a large cohort of 31. In 2020, we actually shifted um, our program structure to be a virtual one. And we had a smaller cohort of 17. And last year in 2021, due to the new structure that we had in place, we were able to onboard an even larger cohort of 44 startups, making it our largest cohort yet. And I will talk to you more about the structure of this program later on. So we have been able to run this program ever since 2017 due to the support of our financial industry partners uh, that sponsor our programs. So these are the programs that, uh, sorry, these are the partners that we have been working with over the years. And these are the corporations that really believe in innovation and investing in innovation. We are still finalizing uh, the list of partners that are going to be involved for this year, uh, but we will announce that very soon. And uh, it's important to note that this program is mainly B2B focused but we have had B2C companies join the program from around the world uh, under a different kind of model that they presented to explore uh, more of a B2B relationship with the banks. Now onto the program structure for 2022. So we ran um, our program using this structure in 2021 and we found that it worked really well. Uh, basically, ever since 2020, we've changed the program structure for, the, for our accelerator. Between 2017 to 2020, we've always had uh, a three-month program. And what we've realized is that our banking partners like to have their own timelines when it comes to working with fintechs. And the most important component of the program is what we call the speed dating phase, which is when, when we put the selected FinTech founders in front of the right stakeholders from our partner banks or insurance companies to pitch on how they can work with these institutions. So we found that instead of giving our partners a deadline of three months to work with these startups, which is what we did previously, um, we've changed the structure to more of a one month program that consists mainly of this speed dating phase or these pitch days where the selected startups would pitch to these institutions and following the part the, our partners would be able to work with the selected startups at their own pace. Uh, that way we don't really restrict them to working with startups for three months only. So we would run this program twice a year uh, and we call them innovation sprints. So the first sprint would be sprint A at the second sprint would be sprint B. And we will be receiving applications for both sprints throughout the year. We will be selecting the startups based on our partners' focus areas for the year. And the cohort will be selected in batches of sprint A and sprint B. For this year, we are looking to kick off interviews in May for sprint A and run the program throughout June. 
And for Sprint B, Sprint B we, we will be interest, uh, interviewing in September and will run the program throughout October. Both Sprint A and Sprint B cohorts will, uh, will be presenting to an audience of financial industry partners throughout the program. And after that, the partners select the fintechs that they see promise and working with. And that's when we connect you directly with these institutions uh, to take your uh, conversations further. Um, both Sprint A and Sprint B end with an investor day in November, which is what we call our version of a demo day. So in, in the investor day, you will get uh, a chance to showcase and pitch your solution to the wider fintech community. Uh, the program will be held as a hybrid format this year, where we leave it up to you uh, if you would like to fly into Dubai for your pitch days or your meetings with, the, with these institutions. Otherwise, uh, you will also have the option to pitch and meet with them virtually. In, in parallel to our FinTech Accelerator program, we will be running uh, our scale-up program. Now, this is a program where we launched for startups that are more mature, and this includes those that are raising Series A and beyond. So in the first program that I talked about, the FinTech Accelerator, we would be evaluating your technology against the needs of our financial institution partners. However, in the scale-up programs, it's more of a program that gets you access to the region's leading investors. Uh, similar to the accelerator, we will be running this program in two sprints. One would kick off in June and the other would kick off in October. The final program that I would like to talk to you about is our Accelerate Her program. So we launched Accelerate Her three years ago as our women empowerment initiative. And this year we'll actually be running it in collaboration with uh, HSBC. Uh, it is basically our female-focused career mentorship program that's targeted for young women that are at an early stage in their career. Through this program, the ladies would be exposed to a diverse range of experiences and would be able to really build their network and knowledge through gaining access to activities such as mentorship, uh, workshops, and more. Um, the participants in this program don't necessarily have to be startup founders, although they can be. But this program generally is for young women that work in the field of financial services in general. Over the years, we've selected over um, we've selected uh, 68 finalists from a pool of over 250 applications, and collectively they've received over 150 mentorship pairings. Accelerate Her will also run in parallel with the, our other two programs for the year, uh, where we will have a cohort A and a cohort B. Cohort A will be kicking off in June and cohort B will be uh, kicking off in October. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, feel free to email us at any point through admin at fintechhive.ae. Uh, we're also on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and YouTube, where we post all our program updates and event updates. So I would encourage you to really follow us. And uh, again, like I said, this webinar will be up on our YouTube. So please head on there if you'd like to rewatch it. Uh, and with that, I'd like to open the floor to questions. If you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box so that I'm, I don't miss it. And let's see, anyone asked any questions so far? Okay, so the first question is, um, what is the criteria used to select startups for the program? Uh, so at the very least, we would ask um, for, you, for you to have a, a solution that is live uh, or for you to have an MVP. Um, and then after that, the criteria that follows is that you would need to have a solution that best fits our banking partners priorities for the year. So you would need to be solving a bank's problem. Hope that answers your question. Another question is um, for those 
who didn't get accepted into the first sprint, can we apply again for the second sprint in October? Yes, definitely. So uh, the way we look at it is that we um, look at our pool of applications for sprint A and we onboard the first set of startups for sprint A. And then we go back to looking again at that pool of applications for sprint B, and we do another round of uh, interviews and selection for that. Can a startup enroll into the DIFC without the programs? Yes, definitely. So uh, if you would like to be registered and licensed at the DIFC, please uh, email our email uh, here, admin at fintechhive.ae, and someone from the team will get in touch to connect you with the right people that can um, uh, help you in setting up at the DIFC. Another question is, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, can you please tell us about the priorities of the banks this year? So we haven't had these discussions yet with the bank. And then in general, we don't usually disclose the bank's um, focus areas. Um, we will be having these conversations with them all throughout April, um, but definitely do apply. And then if we see that there is a fit, we would onboard you to the program. Another question is, should we have a running company to get accepted into the accelerator or can I apply at an idea or MVP stage? You should at the very least have an MVP. Um, I think idea stage would be a little too early and maybe you can come back and apply once you've had a, a solution that's fully live. Uh, the other question is, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the innovation testing license? All right. So um, the innovation testing license, I believe that the best people to tell you about this would be the, the team from the DFSA, which is the IFC's regulator. Um, so I think that they're reachable at uh, fintech at dfsa.ae, uh, if I'm not mistaken. If you do, look, uh, if you do a quick search uh, innovation testing license at the DFSA, they have uh, an email specific to fintech startups. I would recommend you reach out directly to them. Another question is, we are a Dubai-based startup. How can Fintech Hive help us uh, with introductions to local players? That is, the, that is the core offering of our accelerator program. So once you apply to the program and you make it through, we will then connect you directly. First of all, we would have you pitch to these local institutions. They could be uh, banks or insurance companies or telecommunication companies. You would pitch to them. And then once they let me know that they see um, a way that they could work with you, you will be directly connected to them. I'm gonna mark this as done. Should we have our product or app be fully built to enter the accelerator program? Ideally, yes. Um, if you have a working solution, that, that would make your chances of joining in the program even stronger. Our solution is in the production. Can we apply for the startup? This is a similar question to the one before. Can you tell us more about what a startup will be exposed to if they sign up for the accelerator programs? So workshops, presentations, yes. So the once you, are, once you make it onto the accelerator program, first of all, you would go through an interview space with the FinTech Hive team. Uh, after that, we will uh, have you present or pitch your solution to the entities that we believe you would, um, uh, the, uh, to the entities that believe most, most likely want to hear a solution like yours. So you would be, pre you would be presenting to them. Uh, this could be virtually, if you are here in person, we could do it in person. Um, and you would pitch to them uh, your solution and you would also pitch to them how you could work with that specific bank. After that, if they, if they let me know that they're interested in working with you, we would connect you with them and you would potentially work on a POC with them, you would potentially work on a partnership model with them. So you would take that conversation forward with the bank. Hope that answers your question. Another question is, should we only be in the B2B space to get accepted onto the accelerator? Um, so we've had B2C startups join the program. It's just that you, you should be willing to um, create kind of like a different model to work with these banks, to have them be interested and take conversations further with you. 
Another question is, can you highlight the cost of the program and the innovative, test, an innovative testing license? There is no cost to joining the FinTech Hive Accelerator program. It's completely free. We also don't take any equity in the startups joining the program. Um, like I said, our objective is to kind of accelerate the FinTech ecosystem in the region. So that's really, uh, our, uh, we, we wouldn't be really making uh, direct money from the FinTech startups uh, that make it onto the program. So it's completely free. As for, an, as for the innovation testing license, again, I would recommend that you reach out directly to the DFSA, although I don't believe that there is a cost to it. Uh, another question is, how do we become partners of the FinTech Hive? Um, I would suggest you again reach out to our admin email, admin at fintechhive.ae, and then someone will reach out to you and connect you with the relevant team. Okay, so our company Evolution Technologies, have, we have designed PE and BC analytics platform, and we are interested for this program. Can we apply? I would encourage you to apply. We will look into it. And if there are any focus areas from our financial institution partners that year that would be best fit to your solution, we would onboard you onto the program. Okay, we've answered most of the questions in the Q&A. Does anyone have any other questions? Just making sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, another question is, can we get some guidelines to apply? Um, I believe my colleague has um, added a link to apply. So basically you just go to a link on our there it is again, thank you, Jadea. Um, basically, you just go onto our website. If you would like to learn more about the programs, you would click on the first link, which is the programs link. The second link takes you directly to the applications page. It's very straightforward. Uh, it wouldn't take you longer than five to 10 minutes to apply. Can we apply if we are a startup which hasn't started operations yet? So I would recommend for you to apply if you at least have an MVP or a working solution. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so that's most of the questions in the Q&A box. Anyone has any other questions before we wrap up the session? Okay, so what would be the next step? So the next step after you apply would be, um, you will receive an email inviting you for interviews if you make it onto the program. We would interview, uh, we would interview you for the program. And then once you're selected, we will let you know and you will be onboarded. We are at post revenue stage. Can we still apply? Yes, you can definitely still apply. So what we find important is that even though you are at post revenue stage, we really would value it if you would have your CEO or your co-founder be the representative of the program. And rather than someone that's in charge of sales, uh, that's because you would be having direct, direct discussions with these uh, stakeholders from the banking institutions and we would like to have someone there that can really make those decisions and uh, uh, offer a model that would really work with these banks. What is the criteria? We've already answered that. Will the accelerator look at neighboring sectors such as legal tech or reg tech? So definitely our startup, our startup accelerator looks at reg tech. We also look at insure tech. We look at Islamic fintech and just general uh, conventional fintech. There's a comment, FinTech is, a transform is transforming banking and finance. 
are there any disruptive partners other than banks as mentors? Yes. So we have uh, we will have banks on board. We will have insurance companies on board. We'll have a telecommunications company on board. And then there are more that are still in the talks. Another question is when will, will the interviews start? Our interviews will uh, go throughout May. If someone is already part of any accelerator, can they apply? Yes, definitely. Another question is, uh, is the only difference between the accelerator program and scale-up program, whether the startup is pre or post revenue? No. So the, the scale-up does uh, look at uh, startups that are series A and beyond. However, um, I would say that FinTech Accelerator is a little bit more extensive. So the scale-up program is essentially a day where you will have to pitch to uh, investors in the region. However, the FinTech Accelerator, we take you through um, uh, a boot camp where you would attend workshops run by our different ecosystem partners. And uh, you, you would then pitch to different institutions and not just one. So if you, if you meet the needs of more than one bank, you would have various different pitch days throughout the month of the program. Hope that answers your question. last date to apply. Uh, so we accept applications on a rolling basis. We would accept applications all throughout the year. We would never close them. Um, and then if we don't look at you for sprint A, we could possibly look at you for sprint B. But the, the time that, I was, that we will stop looking at applications for sprint A would be around the time that we start interviews in May. If the startup is based in any other country and operating there, only do they need an office and a or commitment in opening a branch in the BIFC? Can they continue operating in their country of operation? Yes, definitely. So you don't need at all to have uh, to be registered or set up at the DIFC. Uh, there is a question here. We have an innovation to offer since it's an innovation. Um, something like this would never be in I, I, a, a bank's problem list. Um, so you would have to be solving the problem of one of our partner institutions to be made on to be onboarded onto the program, or you would have to demonstrate in some way that you you would need to work with these uh, partner institutions. Uh, we have received seed capital from some investors. Which program would fit us? Um, I believe the fintech accelerator would be best fit for you. I believe that brings us to the end of our session today. I think I've answered most of the questions or all of the questions in the Q&A box. Um, okay, last question. How do we partner with the FinTech Hive? What is the criteria? Um, so to partner with the FinTech Hive, you would have to be an institution. And again, I'll ask uh, my colleague to put in our, our email or you, you can just see it here on the screen, admin at fintechhype.ae. Uh, if you were interested in partnering with us, just reach out to us directly. If you meant uh, how, what's the criteria for us to be onboarded onto the program, uh, like I mentioned, you would at least need to have a, an MVP. Um, and then you would need to meet our partner partner's priorities for the year. And with that, I'd like to wrap, uh, wrap up the session for today. Uh, if you would like to view this webinar again, it's going to be up on our YouTube channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for dialing in.